Hello, I'm Luca Coasters and today I'll be continuing my series in which I review my top 20 coasters and in this review I'll be covering my 15th favourite coaster, Phantom's Revenge, a huge Morgan hyper coaster at Kennywood in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Phantom's Revenge actually has a really interesting history. It started its journey as Steel Phantom, a 160 foot, 80 mile per hour arrow maker looper which featured four inversions and a 225 foot drop. But because of increasing complaints of roughness and declining ridership, in 2000 the coaster closed and it was overhauled by Morgan replacing most of the track and giving the coaster new trains, while also increasing the main drop to 228 foot and the maximum speed to 85 miles per hour, but all of the inversions were also removed. The layout became more focused on speed and airtime, and when it opened in 2001 it received praise because of these two factors, and it's still regarded as one of the best hypers to this day. But many people say that the coaster is overrated, which led me to go into this coaster with lowered expectations. When I went to Kennywood, I was fortunate enough to get on one of the first trains of the day on Phantom's Revenge, but quite honestly, I was disappointed. The ride lacked airtime and didn't blow me away, but luckily the coaster sped up so much throughout the day, and by the end of the day, I ended up loving it so much that it found a place in my top 15. One of the primary reasons that I love this coaster so much is because of the trains it uses. They use Arrow's old chassis, but Morgan built new fiberglass bodies and new lap bars. The trains are pretty open, but the main draw is the lap bars. The lap bars are small ratcheting bars and they actually come down from the side but they can't come too far down meaning you're guaranteed room on every ride and it's fairly easy to get masses of room on this coaster. One interesting thing about this coaster is the lack of air gates in the station which you don't see on most coasters. This helped speed up operations which were mixed throughout the day. In the morning they were fairly slow but in the evening there was a new crew which was much faster and they were sending trains out really quick. This new crew were also much more lively and it helped create amazing atmosphere in the station. After the train dispatches out of the station, the train dips down and makes a small turn to the right before heading up the 160 foot lift hill. The train travels up the lift hill fairly slow, giving you time to absorb the great view of the surrounding park. Unfortunately, the lift hill faces away from the ravine, which I think is a missed opportunity as you, because you can get amazing views of the river below. The train then dives into the first drop, which isn't anything special. The train twists to the right, giving only a brief moment of floater on the back rows. The train then pulls very little forces at the base of this drop. And then the ride enters a long section of straight track which doesn't really do anything as at this point the train isn't even travelling too fast. The train then rises up with a decent but short moment of positives and climbs up for a second before flattening out. This moment gives weak ejection in the front but in the back the airtime is non-existent. The train then navigates a raised right hand turn giving it a great view of the river and still works below while also providing subtle laterals. The train then plummets down the 228 foot drop which at the beginning of the element gives good airtime ranging from floater in the front row to fairly strong ejection in the back. But the moment only lasts for a second as the drop isn't parabolic so the airtime ends fairly quick and you fall back into your seat. This moment provides a good thrill as you rise up out of your seat, but it would be nice if the drop was deeper so that the airtime was more sustained. Once you fall back in your seat and continue going down this huge drop, you can really feel the speed building up as the train flies into the ravine. The ride then flies under Thunderbolt which acts as an insane head chopper before making a fairly intense left hand turn in which you reach the top speed of 85 miles per hour. This turn has some fairly strong and sustained positives at the base of it, while also giving mild laterals which add to the insanity of this moment. The train then rises up while continuing the 280 degree left hand turn. As the train rises, the laterals get slightly stronger, nudging you to the right, and all this while sustaining the positives from earlier in the turn. This whole turn is surprisingly intense, not because of the strength of the forces, but because they are so sustained. The laterals build up so much throughout the rest of this turn, and at the end of the turn the laterals become fairly strong and at this point the train has risen high above the trees and then the train descends in a shallow decline back towards the ground. The train then turns to the right and pulls up slightly which delivers some nice g-force and this is all happening while the train is flying through a tunnel under Thunderbolt which helps obscure your view of the next element. Halfway through the descending turn, just after exiting the tunnel the track flattens out slightly becoming less steep and this provides a surprising moment of ejector. While it isn't the strongest ejector, it was definitely great as it always caught me by surprise as you can't see it coming because of the tunnel and you don't really expect airtime like this on a steel coaster either. It feels very similar to the bumps leading into some of the turns on GCIs, except on this the airtime was much stronger. This moment really sets the tone for the second half of this coaster while maintaining the amazing speed of the first half. The train then stops ascending and finishes navigating this flat turn then it banks to zero degrees before suddenly descending. This moment gives you a strong pop of ejector which violently throws you up into your restraint. This moment is so strong but it's not sustained at all and it feels more like the second hill of a double down. Just as you fall back into your seat, 
you are ejected out again in the best moment of ejector on this coaster. This moment has strong ejector airtime, which is also fairly sustained. The insanity is also added to by the tiny restraint, which makes you feel as if you'll be thrown out of the train. I'd compare this moment most to the first Bunny Hill on Expedition G-Force, as the airtime is so strong and so sustained, but on this ride the element is even better because you don't even feel like you're secured to the train. This sequence of two back-to-back -back airtime moments makes it feel like you're bouncing in your seat, as before you even have time to fall back in your seat you're being thrown out again in the next airtime moment. After exiting this hill, the train enters a short left-hand turn which has subtle laterals and positives, but the best part of this turn is a head chopper as you fly under the brake run of this coaster. The train then rises up into the double down, but unfortunately before you experience the airtime, there is a set of trims which significantly slows the train down. You still get weak ejector on the first hill, which is actually added to by the sudden deceleration as you're thrown forwards and up, which makes the element feel even more aggressive. Before you even have time to fall back in your seat, you're met with another moment of weak ejector which throws you back into the air. While this airtime isn't the strongest, it is so aggressive as the transition into the airtime is so sudden. However, I still found the airtime in this double down to be quite disappointing as it's so heavily trimmed, but it still has a fun moment as the element is so small considering how much speed the train has. The train then makes a 180 degree turn, which doesn't have much force, but as the train is flying so close to the ground it is pretty fun. And then the train flies up into another airtime hill which has some weak but slightly more sustained ejector, and this pushes you out of your seat. And then you get pushed back into your seat in a surprisingly strong moment of positive G's before rising up into the brake run. This final rise into the brake run doesn't have much airtime except for some flows from the front. So overall, as you can probably tell by my description of the layout, objectively this coast isn't the best, but it's just so much fun. The first half feels like a giga with how much speed it has and some of the airtime in the second half is absolutely insane. The restraints add to this so much as they feel so open and it feels like you could just fly out of the train at any time and this really adds to the excitement of the coaster. The real star of the show on this coaster is the second bunny hill, which is one of the single best airtime hills on any coaster, but the rest of the ride is also really fun. I also love the terrain interaction on this coaster. This coaster has some of the most impressive terrain usage I've ever seen, as it flies down the ravine, which is so steep. I can only imagine how challenging construction was because it had such difficult terrain to work on, but there is nothing like flying into a ravine while staying so close to the ground, and it makes the ride stand out among other hyper coasters, and it just makes the ride so much more fun. This is added to by interaction with Thunderbolt, which also makes great use of the train, but nothing to the level of Phantom's Revenge. This is also one of the smoothest coasters I've ever ridden. The only resemblance of roughness was a slight rumble at the bottom of the first drop, but it didn't affect re-rideability at all. This combined with the amazing restraints allowed me to easily lap this coaster, going straight from the exit back to the entrance, as I just couldn't get enough of it. Marathoning this ride with a couple of friends at night was one of the best experiences I've ever had at a park, as the ride is just plain fun, and the insane amount of room that you can get on this coaster add to that fun factor. The night ride on this coaster is also amazing, as most of the layout is not lit up and all you can see in the ravine is the lights of Thunderbolt, but for the most part you're completely blinded by the darkness. So, seeing as I love this coaster so much, I'll give it an impressive score of 94 out of 100. This is definitely a coaster worth checking out if you're in the area, and it's also certainly worth travelling for as the coaster is so impressive. Even if you didn't enjoy the coaster as much as I did, it is easy to appreciate it for its impressive terrain usage and its uniqueness. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on Phantom's Revenge in the comment section below, and I would appreciate it if you liked and subscribed for more roller coaster based content.